Welcome to Movie Recall. In today's video, we'll be going through the 2018 action sci-fi film Rampage. It's time to recall. Let's get started. Turn on subtitles and spoilers ahead. In 1993, a new technology to treat incurable diseases through genetic editing called CRISPR was invented and then was quickly misused to develop dangerous experiments. Back in the present day, in a space station called Athena-1, a lab rat has been mutated with CRISPR and kills the entire crew except Dr. Carrie Atkins. She informs the control room about the situation of the space station while going towards the escape capsule. Unfortunately, the control room refuses to unlock the capsule, and Claire Wyden, CEO of the responsible biotech company called Energine, forces Carrie to retrieve the mutant gene samples, or she will be left dead there. She goes back to the wrecked ship and manages to secure three samples. She is then spotted by the monstrous rat, but is able to get into the escape capsule on time and departs from Athena 1 just before it explodes with the rat inside it. However, the scratch damage caused by the creature causes the capsule's window to shatter, destroying the entire capsule and killing Carrie instantly. On Earth, Davis Okoy, a primatologist who works at the San Diego Wildlife Sanctuary, leads Nelson, Amy, and Connor into a gorilla enclosure. Davis tries to interact with the newest member of the club, Pavo, who seems still quite aggressive, but he manages to calm him down with the sign language. Suddenly, an albino gorilla who has become Davis's best friend for a long time, George, comes in, which makes Connor panic and run away. Seeing Connor run away, Pavo runs after him until George knocks him over. Despite that, George seems to have a great sense of humor and likes to make fun of people. Davis reminds George to be friendly towards Pavo because the poachers killed his entire family and he is now an orphan gorilla. Davis asks George to do a fist bump, but he gives a middle finger instead, which makes the others laugh. As Davis drives home that evening, the three canisters, which were retrieved by Carrie previously, arrive on Earth. The first one lands at the gorilla enclosure, spraying George with the gas within it, while the second one lands in the forest near a pack of wolves, and one of them is exposed with the gas. The last one splashes in a river of the Everglades National Park, where it is swallowed by a crocodile. The next day, Davis is told about George's strange behavior, who suddenly invades a grizzly enclosure. Upon arrival at the enclosure, he is shocked to see a grizzly has been cruelly killed by his best friend. He admits that he is the one who slaughtered the bear and apologizes to Davis. The gorilla has also surprisingly become much bigger than yesterday. The team manages to find the canister, and Davis recovers it. On the other hand, Brett, Claire's brother who is also a stakeholder in Energine, is very furious when he discovers that his mini space station is completely destroyed and his company's stock is plunging. However, Claire seems satisfied and doesn't seem to care about the money she lost because the successful mutation proves the Project Rampage experiment is successful. She is also very confident that they still have hope in the project because the report from the American Meteor Society reveals the location of one of the samples, causing her to immediately hire a private military service to retrieve the canister before anyone can trace it back to Energine. The military team is led by Burke, and he and his team are heading towards Wyoming, the place where the second canister was landed. Upon arrival, Burke reports to Claire that the canister is severely damaged and discovers that all of the wolves have been slaughtered. Realizing that the remaining wolf is infected, she orders him to capture the wolf dead or alive. Davis studies the result of George's blood work and says that it doesn't make any sense as his blood has lethal concentration of growth hormone, which can kill him instantly. Having heard about the Athena 1 disaster and news about George escaping the enclosure on TV, Dr. Kate Caldwell, former employee of Energine, immediately goes to the sanctuary. There, she meets Davis and admits that the canister landed on George's enclosure is her sample. Davis allows her to join the research and she explains the pathogen inside the canister works by editing George's genes, causing him to grow rapidly and become aggressive. Because she developed the mutagen, she claims that she is the only one who can cure George from the disease. Suddenly, George becomes enraged and eventually breaks out from his cage, storming through the sanctuary and terrifying all the guests. Davis tries to calm him down and orders the police to lower their guns. It works. However, a sniper from the helicopter starts firing tranquilizer darts until he passes out. As they travel deeper into the forest, Burke spots the mutated wolf, Ralph, and manages to shoot him from the helicopter. They then land to find the presumed dead wolf's body, but discover a massive wolf's paw print on the ground, which makes them panic. Only a few moments later, Ralph starts attacking and begins eliminating Burke's team members one by one until only Burke remains. Their weapons, even a machine gun from a helicopter, don't work against him because Ralph has developed a bulletproof skin. Ralph also has turned into a very massive and monstrous wolf that allows him to leap towards the air and destroy a helicopter. 
Frustrated and cornered, Burke attempts to fight the wolf for the last time, but he is devoured by Ralph. Davis and Kate are arrested and meet Agent Harvey Russell before being taken aboard the plane that is transporting George. In the plane, Russell questions both of them and muses on Davis's time with Army Special Forces and the United Nations Special Anti-Poaching Task Force. He then reveals that Kate actually was fired from Energine two years ago after she attempted to steal the company's hard drives, causing her to be put in prison for 13 months. This fact makes Davis disappointed and doesn't believe in her anymore because she lied to him and she admits she cannot cure George. In the Energine office, Claire recognizes Kate and predicts that she is gathering evidence to screw them, meaning that Kate is a threat to them. She also reveals that the company has actually completed the cure for the mutated creatures called R-19, which will stop their growth and reduce their aggression. She then plans to draw all the mutated creatures to their office by using low-frequency radio waves where the military will kill them and Claire and Brett will have the opportunity to collect their DNA and make money with it. She is also confident that George, who is still on the same plane with Kate, will escape from it and kill her, eliminating her as a threat to the company. She then activates the device which makes Ralph suddenly stop wrecking around and starts running towards the radio wave source. The crocodile who swallowed the canister earlier also is affected and starts traveling towards the tower. As planned, George, despite being sedated, suddenly wakes up, destroys the cage, and starts wreaking havoc. People start firing at him with guns but deal no effect at all towards George. Unfortunately, someone accidentally shoots flammable stuff, causing it to explode and destroy the plane's turbine. Just before the plane crashes, Davis manages to attach parachutes for himself, Kate, and the unconscious Russell and eject themselves from the plane, leaving George inside it. George survives the plane crash and immediately heads towards the Energine's tower. Claire learns that Kate also survives the plane crash, while the FBI agents arrive at Energine and request to do a full examination of the company's records. Claire wants to put all the blame on Kate, thus she tells the FBI agent that Kate is the one who is responsible for all of the chaos happening right now. Kate attempts to regain trust from Davis by telling him that she developed CRISPR to cure his brother, but the company was secretly using it to build a weaponized DNA. She tried to destroy it, but was caught and sent to prison. Her brother died while she was in prison. After hearing that, Davis is touched and decides to work together with her again. Thanks to Russell, the three of them are rescued and brought to the Scott Air Force Base. There, Davis sees footage of George and Ralph running together. He then explains that it is impossible for two species, a gorilla and a wolf, to travel in a straight line to the same destination. Kate adds that both of them are being called by something and cannot be stopped. Kate and Davis are brought outside by the soldiers, but Davis manages to knock them out, and with the help from Russell again, they escape from the base by using a helicopter. They are heading to Energine HQ to steal the antidote. On the other side, the military attempts to stop the beasts, but fails as they wipe out the entire army. Because of that, the colonel decides to evacuate Chicago, where the beasts are heading to, and Russell informs that to Davis. The beasts have arrived in the city, and the military is overwhelmed to hold their movement, even after using a bunch of tanks and helicopters. A few moments later, the mutated crocodile joins the party and starts wreaking havoc in the city. Left with no options, the colonel orders his crew to prepare the massive bomb which can wipe out half of the city. Russell tries to intervene in the decision and tells him that Davis and Kate are on their way to secure the antidote, but he rejects the suggestion because they have stolen his helicopter. The jet that carries the massive bomb has taken off and is heading towards the city. Davis and Kate manage to get inside the HQ and find the antidote, but they are spotted by Claire. Claire shoots Davis in the stomach and they are forced to hand over the antidote to her. After that, they move on top of the building, leaving Davis alone and taking Kate as a hostage. Just before they take off, George makes it to the top and smashes the helicopter, which almost kills Kate, but Davis comes on time and rescues her. Kate reveals that she manages to hide an antidote with her that will be injected into George later. They are confronted by Claire, but Davis manages to distract her and Kate slips the antidote she has in Claire's bag, punching her in the face before getting eaten by the gorilla. Meanwhile, Brett, who attempts to escape through the ground floor, meets Russell and hands him over the laptop and the lab rat. After that, he runs away but is crushed by falling debris. When George is already feeling the effect of the antidote, Davis and Kate manage to escape from the building with the broken helicopter just before the building collapses. Thanks to the broken chopper, they land safely and survive. They figure that George has returned to his normal self and protect them from the remaining beasts. Davis orders Kate to find a phone and calls Russell to cancel the airstrike while he equipped himself with a grenade launcher and joins the monster fight. After the intense battle between the gorilla and the wolf, the mutated crocodile joins the battlefield and manages to bite Ralph in his neck and eliminate him. 
Kate finally meets Russell, and he manages to swap his lab rat with the soldier's phone that will be used later to call off the airstrike. It's now the crocodile versus George, but it seems that George is struggling to beat it. Davis helps him by throwing a belt of grenades into its neck, which explode, but the crocodile recovers and tosses the gorilla against the steel bar that impales him in the chest. As the crocodile approaches George and prepares to finish him off, Davis uses the gunfire and missiles from the broken helicopter to distract it. Because of that, the crocodile goes after Davis and nearly kills him. Luckily, George, who equipped himself with a steel rebar, leaps into the air and rams it into the crocodile's eyes, finally killing him. The colonel, who sees that the crocodile has been killed, orders to abort the airstrike mission. George fakes his death, which makes Davis very sad, while Russell and Kate arrive there. However, Davis catches George's eye twitching and his hand moving, revealing that he is just fooling around, and George gives his signature middle finger to Davis. Together, they decide to evacuate the civilians from the city while deciding where they should place George. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and click the bell icon to get new movie recaps.